say good black don't crack, they're not wrong. What's your secret? But if we think that to look better is to certainly get a better spirit in our heart and uh, to work every day to become a better wife, a better mother, a better friend, a better sister, then those values and attributes alone will make us more beautiful than we are now. Fear it! Own it! Take a minute and know that you are this power. Put out the fire that our ancestors lit that carried us. Teach our children to claim their destiny. I say it's in the reach of my arm, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman. Phenomenal. How can that girl be the best anything when Catwoman is around? You know exactly who I am and what I'm capable of. Just like I know exactly what you are. Hi, welcome to On The Wake Up Radio. Shout out to my producer, Cindy Ashby. To, um, this is Divine Femininity. And I'm your hostess tonight, Angie. To call in, the number is 844-818. 4433. You can catch us on the wakeupradio.com and otw.com. So the topics tonight is can you really see? Are you defending your life force? So the first one we're talking about, what's your superpower? Hi, I have a magnetic personality. Man, having superpowers that would allow me to change size, fly around, and stretch far enough to reach those cookies that mom hides above the fridge, giving me a crushing physical advantage over most humans, would be awesome. <sighs> Wait a minute. Maybe there is a way. Just maybe. Hello, learners. Welcome to Trick Science, the show that fantasizes about the science behind making our childhood dreams come true. You may have heard about Marvel's new Avengers game, which may or may not be taking place around the same time as Marvel's Spider-Man game. Marvel Game Universe, anyone? That would be so cool. Anyways, in the main storyline, the story begins on A-Day, where the Avengers unveil their second headquarters in San Francisco, along with their very own helicopter. Era that is powered by none other than a recently found Terrigen crystal. An alien crystal that when exposed to water at a certain temperature gives rise to Terrigen mist, transforming people into inhumans, or in other words, altering their biology, giving them superpowers, if not turning them into horrible, disconfigured monsters. Yep, way to go, guys. Nothing like powering your new home base with a highly dangerous and water-sensitive alien crystal. Anyways, you know it. Right after the unveiling of all their shiny new stuff, the Chimera is promptly attacked, resulting in the destruction of the Terrigen Crystal, turning countless people into inhumans. And this is where we step in, because today we're uncovering if your biology too could be altered to give you some of them superpowers. In a lot of superhero movies, especially anything related to the X-Men, there's talk of a metagene present in most humans, that when activated by stress or certain conditions, suddenly gives you your own unique unique powers. Our current human population isn't known to have any sort of dormant metagene. And thanks to the Human Genome Project that was completed back in 2003, mapping the entire human genome, we haven't found any hidden super genes. While metagene talk is more of a clever way for writers to pass in all the deep science of genetics, there may still be more to human genes and their expression. And furthermore, in the Avengers game, instead of going into metagenes, it's the terror mist which is said to rather alter an individual's biology to give them powers and by altering biology we could really say altering the genes and the resulting expression in individuals like Kamala Khan or Spider-Man in the case of that spider bite. Now genes are expressed when DNA or its nucleotides small structural pairs that make up your DNA are read or transcribed by proteins creating a complementary strand of messenger RNA which is then translated 
activated by a ribosome into amino acids that undergo a specific folding process to become a protein that will go on its merry way to do its thing in the body. What's interesting about DNA is the many different types of genes that it possesses. In our DNA, we have what is known as constitutive or housekeeping genes. Genes that are continuously transcribed on a daily basis, allowing us to function normally. Then we have facultative genes, which are only transcribed when they're needed, and silent genes that have their expression significantly reduced or just knocked out entirely. The last one I'll mention is inducible genes, whose expression, if they're ever expressed at all, is reliant on changes in the organism's environment. And this is where things get interesting. Now, if you're still here after surviving whatever biology class flashbacks I've given you, one way that we could all exist as a superhuman society is if we humans did carry a seldom expressed inducible gene, which, exactly like a metagene, was only activated under certain environmental conditions. As for what these environmental conditions could be, well, we don't know of any one way, as any number of genes could be expressed under who knows how many different circumstances. I mean, it could be under extreme stress via hiking Mount Everest barefoot, free diving to staggering depths, or through more mundane things like eating a certain food for the first time. Oh, if only I could get ice powers from eating too much ice cream. This is why so many comics have their hero gain a power through a first-time activity or in such a bizarre way, because that's what it takes for a never express gene to suddenly become active if it's already present in their DNA. In other words, if you're just sitting around eating potato chips, binging some Netflix, you probably won't have your flame power suddenly turn on. But if we all as humans have the same set of genes, wouldn't whatever environmental gene activating event just give everyone the same superpower? Well, no. And this is due to gene mutation, which, just like what's mentioned over and over in our uncanny X-Men, is a permanent alteration in a DNA sequence that makes up a certain gene, and can range from affecting a few base pairs of nucleotides to a very large segment of nucleotides. We actually undergo many mutations throughout the span of our lives, whether it be acquired mutations that occur within certain cells due to environmental factors like the sun, or hereditary mutations given to us by our unique set of parents. What's important is that if you were exposed to some tarragon gas or a super glowing baby, is that your constitutive housekeeping genes, along with other genes that allow you to function as normal, be unaffected, and instead only have a certain silent or inducible gene be turned on or altered. Because not only are these the ones that could contain some hidden power just waiting to be read or mutated into existence, but after undergoing your transformation, you can still function, eat, drink, and look otherwise just like you did before, while now having some raging cool powers. Anyways, that's just some science. Trick science! See you learners on the flip side. Pretty interesting. <laughs> I think I think I would go with the inducible. Is it the inducible gene? Because it says you it was something that would come up depending on the environment. So I'll feel bad for anybody when I'm stressed or pissed off because I think that's when it will happen. So <laughs> anybody else? Did you did you hear what other genes and what they were talking about on the in the video? All I know is uh, I get uh, when I get mad, shit goes left. Left, 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 left. Like Carrie. <laughs> like when she's boiling and there's blood coming from my eyes and everybody got to fucking die. So I try not to get angry. So I know what like my kryptonite is, that type of thing. So when I feel like we all have superpowers, it's just like if you're not paying attention, like you'll miss it. But honestly, we all have it, especially melanated people. So I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I ain't even gonna hold nobody. But I agree. I agree. I think when they were talking about in 2020, when um, in December during like the the what is that called again? The winter solstice. Remember, they kept we, they kept talking about superpowers, and I think we probably got activated. But if you don't know, you don't know. But I think we might have. That's just my theory. I believe last year that there was some type of shifting in the universe that kind of activated some hidden uh, uh, spiritual powers that we have as melanated people. And um, 
you know, the dreams became more vivid. Um, the spiritual guidance uh, became a little bit more, um, like, stronger. You, you you could feel more of a presence um, with that power. I, I don't, can't speak for anybody else, um, but I know for myself, yes. And a lot of people that I've talked to said that they could feel something different uh, since last year. So I... You know, um, I do believe that we possess some, you know, some special powers, genetic powers, especially um, our people more so than others. But what would be your superpower? Like if you had to have one, like right now, you had to have superpowers. What would your superpowers look like? I'm just saying I like a good video game. I'm not a, a gamer. But I like watching people play. I'm not going to lie to you. It, you know, um, if I had to have superpowers, um, I don't think it would be so much about uh, strength as a, it might be a laziness. You know, you ever come in with your groceries and you're exhausted and you're like, if I could just do the shit she did on Bewitched and just watch the fucking lettuce march itself to the fucking fridge. <laughs> that's a power. Go ahead. My power would, that would then be whatever I wanted or needed. What If I saw that like $3 million house and I wanted it, the $3 million will be in my pocketbook. So whatever I want, whatever I need, it'll appear in my pockets or my pocketbook. Yeah, we make some shit happen. <laughs> I would, I would alter minds. If I can alter the mindset of people, I would definitely do that. And you know, so eliminate like you know um anger eliminate uh el eliminate any hatred so we can you know be in all peace love and light <laughs> eliminate famine eliminate all of those uh atrocities and evil things in the world that's what i would like to do i agree I was trying to see anyone else. I think minds would be, um, I would love to read people's minds. I wouldn't say everybody because I know that would kind of be like an invasion of privacy but for certain people. <laughs> um, I think I would love that just to know what they're thinking. And especially when you ask somebody a question and you're thinking like, damn, you're lying. That's it. All I got to do is read your mind and that's it. I was like, I already got my answer. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, but would, would it be used for good or evil? I mean, I mean, like, let's be honest here. Some of us, how many of us are super villains in this goddamn room? Get me to that point, and I could. Me. <laughs> that part. That part. I, mean, I mean, that's honest, right? Because everyone, else, even when you ask children, like, what kind of super Man, I can make little white kids cry. I can Say make again? little white kids cry. My, I have a superpower, then I can make little white kids cry. <laughs> That's hilarious. All you got to do is tell her something like, I will snatch you in your sleep while I'll get you while you're sleeping. Nasty little kids. Yeah, no. I would use it that way. I'm not even going to lie. I would scare the white kids. And they would never grow up to be crazy uh, people like uh, Karen's. Uh, the woman. Pardon? I said like Karen's? Yes, Karen's and Darren's. Mm. Definitely. Well, isn't that what Candyman's for? Doesn't Candyman do that already? But Candyman, nobody bothered with him. People came and they messed with him. Talking about Candyman, Candyman. See, like typical black people, he was leaving everybody alone. But nah, y'all got to come to the mirror. Y'all got a Candyman, Candyman. Stop bothering him. What you be? Mm. Mm. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. When I was a kid, I did, rem I did believe in the whole Bloody Mary thing, right? Because, they, you know, you're in the elementary school. They're like, you know, if you say it, she's going to come. And I would always push the envelope. I never said it the third time. <laughs> Not realizing that we're her. Actually, probably worse. So there we go. Everybody has superpowers. What's, she do? What's your superpowers, babe? Love. <laughs> I try to love everyone and try to look for the good in people. That's my problem. Oh, you're like you're like you're like Cupid, but with <laughs> I'm a Libra. We we like love and justice. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 
Libras. Yeah. <laughs> Superpower. <laughs> happiness. Yeah. Love, peace, and happiness there. So you're a superhero then. You're definitely a superhero. Yeah. It's love. Well, yeah. I mean, there needs to be a yin. There needs to be balance. So there's balance in the room. That's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> We're not trying to all set the world on fire. No more. <laughs> I'll take over the world like Pinky and the brain. <laughs> By the way, Pinky was the smart one. Brain was a complete fucking brain Brain was an <laughs> idiot. He was an idiot. <laughs> I, I never watched that show. Pinky and the brain. Hilarious. It, went, it was hilarious. It really was. You know, every day he woke up, he was brain was trying to take over the Go world. Ahead, Back to the cage to plan for tomorrow night. Why? What are we going to do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Try to take over the... <laughs> Try to take over the world. <laughs> Try to take over the... Ow! Perhaps we should sit out and... Try to take over the world from Joyce DeWitt. Try to take over the world to save it from the real supervillains. Try to take over the world with the Ted Turnerator. Try to take over the world without Larry. Try to take over the world without supernatural assistance. Try to take over the world before another idiotic dance comes along. I have no idea. Take a wild guess. Try to take over the moon. Try to take over the yam. Try and take over Oz. Try to take over Chia World. Try to take over the globe. Theater. Run that stupid maze. Try and ditch Dudley Bohr. Trying to <laughs> quit smoking. Try to fix the personalitron and make the unknown Suavo go away. Sing that stupid song another 50 times until we can buy back the lab. Frankly, my dear Pinky, I don't give a damn. At least we're being taken back to the lab, Pinky where we can pack for our Malibu trip. Malibu? Are we gonna take over the world from there? No, I just don't want to pass up an invitation to Martin Sheen's house. We shall stop at a pharmacy and purchase a tube of denture adhesive and then attach our bodies to the bottom of Air Force One. So we can take over the world? No, it's just fun, fun, silly willy. Narf. The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to get oh I no take over. Oh drat. Line. Try reset. I'm sorry, Bobby. I've only said the line a million times. Oh, and he gosh. fell miserably every time. So dramatic. <laughs> Sound like a lot of drama. <laughs> it was. It was. I was gonna say, I guess oh Cindy, you gonna say something? Oh no, no, no. I was just like, let me know when you're ready for the next clip. Oh, so now that's all I was going to say. I said, before we get ready for the next clip, because um, I'm kind of rude and I forgot to do the whole little, you know, for the ladies to introduce yourselves, because I think, I'm not sure if I'm saying the names correctly. Marty's here, Jackie and Yoshika. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if you, okay, so I don't know if you would like to introduce yourselves real quick. I'm, I'm Yoshika with uh, Organic Dispensary. I'm Jackie. Um, I am a mother of three beautiful queens and owner of Mistress Andrew LLC, which is my oldest daughter's art, and owner of Joni Hair Skin and Wellness Products. I am on IG as love dot lee l e e j a y. Um, um, that's my Instagram handle, so you can find me there with all of my products. Everybody introduce themselves. Okay, and I'm I'm Angie, and I also work with Cindy. I do my own um, podcast show. It's called Thoughts of a Light Skin Woman, and it's on every Thursday at 9 p.m. Yes. Um, oh, M Marty, you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. well, if you could just introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Martine. I'm 51. I'm a wife, a mother. Um, homeschooling children. Um, I have two special needs children. And yesterday we met 25 years ago, my husband and I. 
Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Um, I guess if we can now go into the next clip, if it says, dreams, what do they mean to you? If you are unconscious in, in about certain things that ought to be conscious, then you are dissociated. And then you are uh, a man whose uh, uh, left hand never knows what the right is doing and counteracts or interferes with the right hand. Now, such a man is hampered all over the place. Yes. But to take a singer yes. who is absolutely uh, uh, controlling his voice, suddenly he can't sing. Or uh, any other, uh, for take uh, a man who writes uh, uh, fluently, uh, suddenly he makes a ridiculous mistake. But there his habit doesn't function. It may be, you know, that what the unconscious has to say is so disagreeable that one prefers not to listen. And in in most cases, uh, uh, people would be probably less neurotic if they could admit the, the things. You know, these things are, are, are always a bit difficult or, or yeah. disagreeable or uh, inconvenient or something yeah. of the sort. So there is always a certain amount of repression. When in treatment, for instance, in the treatment of neurosis, you have to do with that personal unconscious for quite a while. And then only uh, dreams come that show that the collective unconscious is touched upon. Yes. Now, as long as uh, d uh, there uh, is material uh, to, for personal nature, you have to deal with the personal unconscious. But when you get to, uh, uh, say, to a question, um, to a problem, which is no more merely personal, but also collective. You get collective dream. There are, there are cases who know just as much about their own neurosis as I know about it, in a way. Uh, in, in such cases, I can start right away with uh, posing the problem. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, there is a case, a professor of philosophy, and he imagines uh, that he has uh, cancer. He, he shows me uh, several dozen uh, X-ray plates uh, that prove that there is no cancer. And he says, of course, I have no cancer. But nevertheless, I'm afraid I could have one. You see, I have consulted so many surgeons, and they all assure me there is none. And I know there is none, but I might have one, you see, and that's enough. Now, uh, you see, such a case can stop from one moment to the other. He simply uh, stops thinking such a foolish thing. I you see. see. But that is exactly what he can't do. You know it is nonsense, and why should you think it? Or what for should you think it? Well, and what is that power that makes you think such a thing? It's like a, like a, a possession, you know. Exactly. It's yes. like a demon yes. in him yes. that makes him think like that, in spite of the fact that he doesn't want it. See, then we have the problem. That is the problem for an intellectual man. And then I say, now, you see, you don't know. You have no answer. I have no answer. Now what are we going to do? I say, now we must see what you dream. Because the dream is a manifestation of the unconscious side. Right. Now you never have heard of the unconscious side. So I must explain to him, that he has an unconscious, yeah. and that the dream is a manifestation of it. And if we, we succeed in analyzing the dream, we, we, we might get an idea about that power that makes him think like that. You see? Uh, so, uh, in, in such a case, uh, one can begin right away with the analysis of dreams. And in all cases uh, that are a bit serious, Mind you, this is not a simple case. This is a very yes, serious yes. and difficult case, uh, in spite of the simplicity of the uh, phenomenology, of the symptomatology. In, in all cases, after uh, uh, the preliminaries, as it were, the history of the family, the, uh, the whole medical anamnesis, etc., we come to that question. What is it in your unconscious that makes you wrong? 
that hinders you to tick normally. And then we are uh, there where we can begin with the observation of the unconscious. And then day by day, one goes on by the data the unconscious produces. You see, we discuss the dream, and that gives a new surface to the whole problem. And he, he will have another dream, and the, the next dream gives again an answer, because the unconscious is in a compensatory relation to consciousness. And, uh, and after a while, we get the full picture. And if he has a full picture and uh, has the, the necessary moral stamina, uh, well, then he, he can be cured. But in the end, it is a moral question whether a man applies what he had learned or not. No, I was going to just say, uh, I often, with the whole dream thing and stuff, I had to take, uh, not that I had to, I didn't like sociology, so I took psychology. Ooh, right, whatever. Uh, it didn't matter. It was all stupid. Um, I did learn some stuff with child development and stuff, but other than that, eh, it's all uh, Western madness, babble. But where I come from, dreams mean dreams have symbols and signs. So I don't know. Everyone has a different culture here. So if you dream a fish, it means someone is pregnant. I hope that's the same for everybody. Is that the same? Yes. Yeah. That's yes. the thing. That's the thing. Right. It doesn't matter if you're on the continent, if you're down south, if you're in the Caribbean. Same shit. Um, what else? I don't know. That's what I was trying to say. Like, I wanted to see how different it is, right? Because they make a mold and they kind of say, this is what it is. I'm Freud. I'm called Jung. This is what it means. But we know it's something different. Our dreams are actually portals to telling us what the fuck is going on. That's what I'm basically trying to say. And so I wanted to know any, like, what did you learn? Like, what did your family teach you that certain things, what they mean? You know, like teeth. Oh, teeth mean death. Like, if you lose your teeth, it means death. Also, um, just trouble. It doesn't always necessarily mean death. Like, your teeth crumbling or falling out, it can mean trouble. It doesn't always mean death. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Interesting. I, for me, um, I guess half of the stuff you said, even even in the Hispanic culture, has been the same when people have dreams. But I've noticed for myself, besides of what was said, I've always noticed that that dreams either I noticed that sometimes I would dream about certain stuff and maybe it would happen or maybe it had a meaning behind it. Other times I was probably just having dreams because probably what I just saw right before I went to bed and I'm in my dream bugging out. It's like, why can't I run any faster? Why is this person chasing me? <laughs> I mean, those type of dreams where I was just like, look, I'm ready to wake up because I want to know why am I running so slow that I can't escape this person and they're like right behind me. Dreams does sign they signify things that are going on in your life and things that are going on around you. Um, for me, my dreams have been very vivid, vivid to the point that I can remember them years later. Dreams that I've had as a child that I can remember and tell you about them verbatim, um, that never go away because they are so vivid. One thing that I, at a point in time in my life, would, would dream about always came to fruition was death. I would know exactly who would who was going to pass in the coming weeks and my family. Um, it was always in my family, it was never anyone outside of the family that I could actually call my family members and say, uh, this person um, I saw in the dream. And they already knew when I would tell them that that is what would be. Um, and there was only one time that I was wrong. I thought it was my sister because that's who was shown to me in the dream. But it wasn't my sister, it was my brother who was murdered. But I saw it two weeks before it happened. Um, I was able to see those things vividly um, because I would always wake up out of my dream fully crying and mourning. And two weeks, within the two week period, um, that person would pass away. Outside of that, um, 
those dreams have stopped. I'm not able to tap on those things anymore. And I'm okay with that <laughs> for the most part. Um, that was a burden for me um, to carry. It, it didn't make me feel good to have those dreams. But I do still have very, very vivid dreams that I can wake up from and remember everything from the beginning to the end. And I still cry. Um, maybe once a year, I have to be shaken to be uh, waking up from a dream that I'm so deeply emotionally encompassed uh, by that I'm that I'm crying, like fully crying in my dream. So um, they are they are significant. Um, I know some people that don't dream at all and probably and, and don't remember ever having a dream. And I don't know what that is about, but um, yeah, those, that's been my experience with my dreams. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I, I've always uh, understood it to be, isn't also dreams the way your subconscious deals with what's going on in your life? And sometimes uh, your dreams can tell the future or foretell things like just if you go back to the biblical story of um who was it that dreamed of the famine um they dreamed of the famine and and what was the dream they saw that that the seven that uh that the fat the calves all fat and but there was also uh uh he dreamed also when the famine was coming so dreams have have can foretell things as well i was gonna say i was just listing names i was uh, i was gonna be like job lot david you know how you know names but i don't know who it belonged to i i think if i'm not mistaken it was joseph it's been a while i mean but i do remember even when i was reading the bible or have read or have read passages in the bible about dreams and being able to foresee things in dreams. So you think that, because uh, here's the thing, we know many family members, you know they dream and they'll come to you and be like, so Marty, you're pregnant. And you'll be looking at them, excuse me? <laughs> but then you really be pregnant. So is that is that connected because you're connected with them or you feel like they're connected on a different plane? It could be both. That's like the weird thing is like, let's say somebody close to me in the family or a family member, I'll be woken up out of my sleep when they die. Happened with my grandmother, happened with my uncle. Crazy thing even happened with my husband's aunt Poochie. Night she died, I woke up at, and I, I was just found out I was pregnant with my son, Zach, and we were in New York visiting family. It was a holiday time. And we went to New York. We were living in Georgia to tell the family that, you know, were pregnant and um it was christmas eve the night before christmas eve and we're at my i'm at my father's in laws and it's like three in the morning woke up in his condo and i'm crying and he's like why are you crying baby what's wrong and then um grandma thomas called and told us aunt poochie had passed away see superpowers my uncles mm -hmm. she was saying her uncles your uncles your uncles when they passed away when my uncle died of when my when my uncle Pierre when he died of cancer I was eighteen woke up he's gone I knew my uncle my uncle Wooly he passed away woke right up he's gone I knew my grandmother I was sixteen and she died in she was in Haiti Thanksgiving week the it was that the Sunday it was Thanksgiving weekend and that Sunday and they called from Haiti like five in the morning. And I woke up at like four, like something's wrong, grandma, grandma, grandma. And then, yeah, she, they, my mother got the call that her mom passed, my grandmother passed. We're spiritually connected. Um, we are connected by blood, our bloodlines, um, which is a spiritual connection. And when we have um, gifts, special gifts, um, and like you said, Cindy, the, our dreams are like a portal in the spiritual realm. So with my sister, uh, right before she passed, I was awakened 
I did not dream. She was sick. She was uh, battling cancer. Um, I did not dream prior to the two weeks, um, you know, with her passing, but I was awakened out of my sleep at, uh, I think it was like 1230, one o'clock in the morning. Um, I just was waking up and my phone rang and I literally kind of knew what was coming because I had already had my back packed and in the trunk. I knew. Um, and I was in South Carolina by 6.30 in the morning, uh, <laughs> tough six and a half hour drive. I made it down in five and a half hours um, and she passed. So we are spiritually connected and some of us are connected in, um, through our dreams and we that's a portal for us. So we are given information by the ancestors in our dreams as well. Last year, when July 22nd, when my sister passed away, um, I was visited for the first time ever in my life. I never knew anything about ancestors. I grew up in the South, so we were raised to be, you know, like either Jehovah Witness, Baptist, Evangelist. We only knew religion. We didn't know anything about the Orishas, spirituality. But I was visited by an ancient in my dream for three weeks straight every night. And she gave me messages. And since then, um, I've been given messages. And um, it is it's something that uh, you feel different. You feel like you've been selected or handpicked to carry messages. Um, it's a gift. And at the same time, I feel like, uh, I won't say it's a curse. I feel like it's sometimes you don't want to be that one. But um, that's just a hand that you dealt. And you 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 have to learn how to live with it. Um, and yeah, so it, it's, it's a blessing nonetheless. Um, to be able to see things that you can go to the family, you can go to your friends, and you can try to prepare for the, as best as you can. And I think that that is, um, that's when you are uh, spiritually connected, that, that these dreams are those portals for us. Thank you for that. <laughs> Cindy, you going to say something? I was gonna ask you, Shika. She wants you got anything for us? Hello. Um some of the things that you're you know, are saying is true. Um, you know, sometimes it, it just seemed like for me, um, you know, when someone dies, sometimes they do come to me in in my dreams. But and I don't dream very often. That's the crazy part. Um and at one point in my life, I used to have deja vus, but not anymore. I, I rarely have a dream. Um, but I haven't, like, growing up and everything, I wasn't, I didn't learn to, to, to know about dreams and that they have meanings to them. Um, I, I had to learn that. I learned that um, recently. They even have, um, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, but I'm still learning, you know, along my, my little journey here, <laughs> my spirituality as well, um, you know, and the meaning of numbers and, and, and everything. I'm, I'm still on my, my journey, my spiritual journey. Martia, do you want to say something? Yes, I was going to say, um, Thank you for sharing that with us. And that there are dream books. There are dream interpretation books. They okay. have tons of them out. So you can get them and you can, you know, they, they sometimes are listed like the different things that you can dream. Like you can open up about teeth or you dream about a cat or you dream about rats or whatever it is. But there mm -hmm. are dream dictionaries that you can pull things up. And it was something that Jackie said that, that, reminded me of, of what she said about being spiritually connected and with the bloodline. And I remember just, I was recently speaking with my mom and she she told me that, well, the crazy thing is that she can see spirits. 
I can't do that. But like she says, like she, there are certain um, spirits that she can see walking in her backyard. And um, she says that when my uncle died, that my sister said she remembers a dark figure going through the house, looking in each bed and just looking, but nah, it's not any of you. And it just left. I believe it. So uh, there's a lady that passed in my house. And one day I was doing a show uh, a while back. And I, at that time I had a guy that was like recording it. He was in Atlanta. And I was talking about the portals, like portals and how the other side is there and shadow people and how down in um like Tulsa in certain areas and stuff, there's a, people do a lot of, um uh, I don't know, like spells and incantations because the soil out there is like a special type of soil. Y'all y- 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 get my drift. And the door kept opening and closing. It's something that I think the lady does that used to live here. And my neighbor told me a witch used to live here. I was like, wait, she was like, no. Every time I saw the bitch, the bitch didn't even walk. The bitch was just floating, floating in the backyard, floating in the <laughs> I was like, was she? She was like, no, she was alive. But every time she saw the woman, the woman was like, she was floating. So she was like, no, that bitch was a witch. I don't care what nobody say. So my daughter sleeps in the middle room. And ever since she was young, she would wake up with scratches. And she told me of a dream she had by the time she was about right before she turned 15. And she said to me, it was a shadow person whispering in her ears, their hand on her heart, holding on to her heart, talking to her. I said, were you scared? She goes, no, I just couldn't figure out what it was trying to tell me. That was so annoying. And so at her age, I was able to see. I didn't, it's funny because I can't see my people. I can see everybody else's people. Let it make sense. I'd love to see my grandmother, but maybe that's not for me. I can see everybody else. And literally have not even a conversation with them, but they'll just look, they'll look regular like you and I. And then it's something that my cousin kind of told me that if you want them to go away, you have to say to them, listen, I need you to leave. You can't be here anymore. Thank you. You know, kindly. Like you stay on your side. I'm going to stay on my side. That type of shit you tell your husband in the bed where you ain't trying to deal with him. You stay on your side. I'm going to stay on my side type shit. But know that that veil, that spiritual world is real a lot of people dismiss it but what's it saying if you don't believe in it and it doesn't exist is that even a thing no you don't you even if you don't believe in it it exists uh period um it's not a matter of belief is is what is what is the reality um so you <laughs> i i've heard stories coming up in the south that they were prevalent down there in the South. My mom, the, everybody in the family always talked about these ghosts in the house. And one night all of them were sleeping and they, they had a huge China cabinet in the dining room and everybody in the house heard the China cabinet fall. All the dishes broke. They all got up and ran in the dining room, China cabinet standing up, no dishes broken. It never fell, but they heard it and they always saw spirits. So they exist we're living in it's we're on a plane it's like a realm and every now and then the realms cross every now and then it depends on what's going on in the universe the realms do meet they cross and the spiritual world intermingles with our realm um even more so than they do on a day-to-day basis i honestly feel like there has been so much bloodshed on this America through violence and destruction and because of hostile madness and resources. And I get it. I get the battle. I get the war. But if you think about how many ancestors just died, did what they were told and still got scalped and still got put buried under for no fucking reasons. How many babies were cut out of fucking bellies? Cause Karen didn't like the way Massa looked at her. The blood on the earth, America, right? Oh, I can't speak for anywhere else. I, I just know this is why 
they walk around. They're like in limbo. How could you go anywhere? You weren't even ready to leave. So, I mean, I think there's like this, this, it's like a bit of the veil and then the dreams and then the interconnecting. And plus my son, when he was eight, he said to me, oh, when we're sleeping, we're awake. But when we're up like this, this is a dream. This right here is the stupid simulation. That's why we're annoyed all the fucking time. It's only when we rest our head. Sometimes we could be at peace and sometimes it could be a nightmare. But it's, it was something, you know, way he said it. And you know how children will say something. You'd be like, God damn. I knew you were brilliant. <laughs> you know, shit like that. You know, and I thought about it, uh, Cindy, when you mentioned it before. He is absolutely right. Because in the spirit, we are whole. We're, we're complete in the spirit. Our brains are the fucked up parts of us. You understand? We are, we are able to think so negatively. The brain is the portal for evil. Let's just, let's, let's just um, clear that up. So these are the messages that I've been given. The brain is the entryway to negative thoughts, wicked thoughts. The heart is our spirit. Our heart is how we have is where we have compassion and empathy to love unconditionally. Once we start thinking, that's where the negative comes in. That is that portal for wicked wickedness. So when we are sleeping, the brain is off. It's off. We're not thinking. So your son was absolutely correct. Thank you for that. So I just wanted to say something before we go into the next clip, since we were talking about dreams. Um, I remember having a dream when I was much younger. I don't know if I could have been a, a, a preteen or a teenager at the time, but I do remember having a dream. And it's funny because this is about the, the next clip. It's about UFOs. And I thought it was so weird because in my dream, I wake up and I go to the window and I see the UFOs in the sky. But at the same time, what was happening was that the streets were, was filling up with water. And then for some reason, like I guess, which I guess you call like the potholes, all of a sudden the water started going down. Like all the water just disappeared once that opened up. And so when I woke up the next day as a kid, I'm thinking like, what did that dream mean? It's like, is, is this, is it the UFOs? <laughs> or is this somebody trying to tell me something? Because I was trying to figure out, but I don't know if my mom or whoever I told, got into like a whole biblical thing because when I said about the water and then the water disappearing, but again, the UFOs were in that part of the dream. So I don't know where that comes into any biblical stuff. So I don't know, but yeah, that was, that was part of my dream. That's awesome. That's an awesome ass dream. <laughs> so you want me, you want me to go to the next clip ladies? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she made it back. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> you ready for me to go to the next clip or you want to tell us about the dream? I don't really have dreams. Oh, explain. Please explain. You don't <laughs> dream. I don't dream. It's very, oh. it's very seldom. Usually when I'm asleep, I'm out. I don't, it's blank. It's just dark. Let me find out you building pyramids in a day and shit until <laughs> you be so tired you can't dream. <laughs> I must really have something going on in order to dream. It's very sold. Y'all ready for the next clip, ladies? Yes. Bring it on. Yes. Close encounter. This object you see here was caught on camera flying past the SpaceX rocket just minutes after liftoff last week. Transportation correspondent Gio Benitez is tracking the story. Good morning, Gio. Hey, George, good morning. Yeah, the internet lighting up with questions over this video. Did the object come from the rocket or from somewhere else? This morning, some possible answers. This morning, a potential close call caught on camera. A mysterious object captured on tape flying very close to the SpaceX Crew Dragon with four astronauts on board. Mission. And lift off. Take a look at this video. Just 12 minutes after the astronauts left planet Earth Friday morning, part of the Falcon 9 rocket separates from the Dragon. That's when some kind of object flies between the two, 
Take a closer look in slow motion. But what exactly was that object seen early in the flight? Sources telling us it appears to be ice from the liquid oxygen in that rocket. But this morning, no official confirmation on what it was. The thing that makes me think that that is just most likely a piece of ice is that it happened right at the uh, at the time where they were going to where they were inserted into orbit. Lots of hugs and smiles right now. In the end, the astronauts arriving safely at the International Space Station over the weekend to begin their six months of research. And back here live at the Intrepid Museum in New York, we've got the Space Shuttle Enterprise right behind me. This actually played a huge role in understanding ice buildup during the shuttle days. Now this video may do the same, and SpaceX will likely look at it frame by frame, Robin. Sounds good. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. You, you had to see my face because once they explained it a little bit more about maybe saying that it was like the piece of ice because my face is looking at it like that small little thing flying by. I wouldn't even consider that to even be any... To me, it looks so small. But it's like that doesn't even look like a UFO to me. You know what I mean? It just... It just seems so tiny. And then in my mind, I went to Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like, that'd be one of them, you know, throwing something across. At them or something. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really nothing. That was not even a UFO. It's like, what are they talking about? Well, sis, let me share, because I couldn't wait for this clip. I saw one for the first time in my life. Last, no, it's August. I saw one June... 18th, wee hours of the morning. My father's birthday is on June 17th. He passed away on September uh, 2019. I had never gone to his uh, gravesite, so I was going down south to to uh, visit. Right. So this is like 3:30 in the morning because I left. I love to drive at night when there's not a lot of traffic on 95. So I'm on the stretch where you pass uh, on the, uh, south of the border, right? And then there's like a about an hour, hour 45 minute drive before you start getting to Florence, Savannah, Georgia exit. So literally just past south, south of the border, I'm on a stretch that has the tree lines. It's two lanes and there's trees on both sides, right? Out of the blue, to my right and above the tree line, this big ass bright yellow light comes out of nowhere. The shit is the perfect shape of a triangle, three dimensional, with running LED lights around each edge. And the lights was just like the Christmas lights, the chasing lights. These was beautiful, like, amber yellow lights that ran each edge that joint started descending diagonally coming across the highway and i'm in shock mouth open like what the fuck is that <laughs> so my friend is sleeping and i as it drops down closer like hovering over the highway it never stopped it was just a smooth glide I realize how freaking large this shit is. Humongous. And it's it it the closer I got as I'm driving, I can see it. And I start yelling, yo, yo, look at this shit. Yo, look. I promise you on everything I love. It's mercury on the inside, swirling. It's, it was so fucking gorgeous gorgeous there's an, it's nothing like it it's nothing like seeing one of these things in person in person anyway as it gets to the other side the opposite side of the highway it hits the tree line the motherfucker disappeared in thin air i was i was floored i was floored but i was not afraid it, it didn't seem like it posed any harm, no nothing. You couldn't see any little beings on the inside. But what I can say is that Mercury, I was able to see it up close. I don't know who else saw it out there on the highway that night. But you were able, when I, I, I just, you could see through it. It was almost like translucent. But the, the middle of it 
was swirling like it was mercury just swirling in it it was freaking i can i i will never forget it for the rest of my life and every time i get an opportunity to tell somebody i'll be like you know i saw i saw you i saw a ufo for real for real so i spoke with the brother nation of islam and he said you saw a baby ship we call them baby ships he said what that means is when you are blessed to see one is that you have protection and I never heard of this, never, 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 never. I always believed in them, always looked up to the skies for some reason. But it took me at 47 years old to finally see one in person. And I'm scared to go online and ask anybody who was out there June 18th in the wee hours of the morning. Like if you was on 95 on this strip, on this stretch at 3 34 o'clock in the morning, did you see this three dimensional UFO? But I'm, I promise you they exist. And, you know, I, I've never been a naysayer about anything. Um, UFOs, I never knew whether they existed or not, but I'm a believer. I saw it. It was, it was stunning. I'm, and I'm in awe. So, yeah, they exist for real, for real. Anybody else saw one? <laughs> You know, my crazy ass did. I, it wouldn't even be right if I didn't say yeah. <laughs> to come right behind that. <laughs> but my, my, mine's look different. You know the guy, the game Simon. The the It lights green, yellow, red. And then you have to follow the pattern. Yeah. Yes. When I was, well, right when I was up in Long Island, when I was going to uh, SUNY or Westbury. Um, and I was doing like campus security and shit like that because they had to pay for my fucking room and board somehow right so they had to pimp me out and put me on post but I remember and this is before cell phones were like that do you get what I'm saying so you couldn't really it was when it was like prepaid and you know they didn't have the camera wasn't even all that but I remember it it was out there well thanks for telling me the guy told you you're blessed because that's dope because it kind of stayed out there with me for the whole night and I kept asking people you see what that is and they were like oh it's a plane I was like I've been out here for four hours why is the plane still there and why is it different colors and do you get know what I'm saying and yeah. so it was just like common sense but I think sometimes when we don't want to believe something we'll just our brain will be like no it's okay it's okay it's just a plane it's a bird it's a plane it's a what's it? it's a bird it's a plane it's a <laughs> you know whatever the fucking song is but yeah People want to believe what they want to believe because they don't want to, you know, that saying, do I believe you or my lying eyes? Because all my eyes lying to me. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I know. And I've always been like, a, oh, oh, my God, unsolved mysteries. Ripley's believe it or not. Like, I've always been into this whole UFO culture. And I know it sounds like, like it could be a religion. Okay. Because when I was like eight years old and I was able to go to the library, I was checking out books called, are you like a star seed or a sun child or a moon child? Because I felt like I didn't fucking belong at home. I'm not going to lie to you. And I was trying to figure out what planet did I come from? Because you just, I just felt like I didn't belong. I mean, we see that I'm human in flesh, right? But the mind goes somewhere else. And I just don't know, is that connection, was that UFO connection for you, uh, Jackie, or whoever else? Was that your people saying, hi, E.T., phone home? I don't know. Well, I was going to say, if they are out there and they do exist, they need to come take me. <laughs> Except, you know how the jokes, they're always talking about people getting probed. It's like, no, I don't want any of that. But if they really are out there they need to come get me because I don't belong on this planet. Uh, and I really sometimes do believe that there, there is something else on the other planets. I don't know if they don't want to come to us or maybe because they're fine where they are. So they don't want to explore further, but yeah, don't come to earth. All I know is come take me, come take me out of this planet. I'll go where they're at. Wait, unless they're or organ harvesting. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to get stuff like a, a burrito or whatever the hell it is. Honestly, I think they're energy harvesting, harvesting us now. But, you know. I, I, I was told that they were on our side. You know, if you go back and you look at the the Egyptian 
uh, hieroglyphics, you see them etched in stone. You, you see them. And I mean, like, they, they are they're historical. They were here before us literally like they came and taught the egyptians how to build they they taught them everything so um like our eyes see that they've been here for forever it's just that we don't want to believe it or, or either we've been led to believe that they do not exist now the one that the the u.s military just spotted literally dived right into the ocean like they dropped right into the ocean so it begs the question, well, what the fuck is in the ocean? What are they after? You know, they, they've they been around for forever. They're not in, this is nothing new. We are not the only ones that exist in this universe. Um, we can't be, and, and we're not all knowing either. Wait, I'm going to play it. You ready for me to play it? I didn't look yeah, at it. It's the funniest shit ever, right? <laughs> no, I didn't play it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going for... Yeah. I'm going for it. Like, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> like this. I, I hope I'm clicking the right shit. I hope it's not porn. Well, you know, not like that. Well, you know, we're all grown here. <laughs> Just about quarter to five, and take a look at this viral video from La Junta in southeastern Colorado. All right. Vivian Gomez wrote on Facebook that her security camera captured this on Sunday morning. There are people on Facebook who say it looks like Dobby from Harry Potter or a ghost or an alien or a kid in flip flops and underwear. We think it looks like Lisa doing her Sunday morning dance. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Lisa, were you in La Hunta <clears throat> on Sunday? I know she was out of town. Give it away. Uh, the video <laughs> has been seen by 11 million people. That's going to be the new dance craze right <laughs> yeah. there. Yes, honey, our little UFO buddy was coming from the club. <laughs> I was not really ready for that. I, was, I, I wasn't even ready for that. <laughs> he flapped his little elbows and everything and then disappeared. <laughs> I said he was coming from somebody's party. <laughs> they didn't even know he was there. <laughs> This shit that's on YouTube is just crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm i a true believer. I'm a true believer. I'm sold. After seeing what I saw, uh, there's nothing anybody could ever say to me to say, you know, like, they don't exist. Oh, hell yeah. Shit, yeah. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. That was not a weather balloon or anything else I saw. That shit disappeared. As soon as it hit the opposite tree line, it disappeared and thin air. I'm a believer. Yoshika, you got your UFO story, girl? Tell us. <laughs> I do not have a story. At one point in time, I didn't believe in UFOs. I've been reading up on it. They do exist, I believe. Um, but to me, it seemed like they are similar to our spirituality. Uh, not spiritual but like on a spiritual sense they seem like they kind of intertwine with the human spiritually as well as UFO type of ordeal I'm still learning I'm still learning it though but it's they do seem kind of the same I know I seem strange no, you, you know, you, there's always been a lot of people that always believed in them, never saw them, never had enough proof. Now, all of a sudden now you are, have, you have the U.S. military that's coming out and showing a video of it, of UFOs. Everybody's showing videos of UFOs. They've been showing videos of UFOs, but nobody ever believed it. You had a lot of people talking about being abducted and we never believed it. So... I mean, yeah. there's some proof now. Well, I thought that little bit that that video was cute because, uh, yeah, that doesn't look like a human. It sure doesn't look like a child, and I'm not saying a person can't look as skinny as that, but I wouldn't consider that to to be a human being for some reason. Uh, I know if we're going into the next clip, it says children today how to reach our youth. And you gonna have the nerve to laugh and joke when teachers trying to teach you? 
You got the nerve to, to act a fool when somebody cares about you. You talking while I'm talking. Do you know if I go to a Jewish school, them kids quiet. If I go to a white school, them kids quiet. If I go to a Latino school, they quiet. The only kids that disrespect me is black kids. That's it. My own are the only ones that disrespect me. I walk in any other school, they like, they go E.T. We taking notes. I come home. You talking. You capping jokes. You think something funny. Look how we living. Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing funny, y'all. Look, when I got my Ph.D., what embarrassed me, I'm in there. They asking me, like, what's wrong with our urban schools? Like, why are you asking me? I'm in classes like you in class. Every, uh, the, print, the teachers want to know, professors want to know, well, why are your kids, what's the problem in the school system? I'm embarrassed, y'all. I'm a grown man. I'm embarrassed that they talk about y'all. And you know why I'm embarrassed? Because what they don't know is you ain't even trying when you take the test. You didn't give your best. They think you dumb. You ain't dumb. You can't take our people from Africa and put us in the diaspora and spread us all over the world and we survive slavery and we can't pass the test? Come on. I ain't stupid. You take everything from us and we still survive? And you gonna tell me we can't learn how to write? Have you lost your mind? We are survivors. That's all we do is survive. And you're going to come and tell me you can't take a test. No, you can take the test. The problem is when you take the test, you barely take the test. I challenge you to go in there and get that dog on piece of paper and that pencil and do your best. I challenge you. That was deep. That was deep. I, I literally teared up. And I'm, I'm very emotional. I felt about, it coming. Yes. I'm very emotional. Because they hurt just like us. I don't care about their age. The gang banging, gun flinging. They hurt just like us. I remember when I was young, growing up in the South, being called niggas. I hurt just like my ancestors. It bothered me just like it bothers the youth. Today, it is not that they have been protected from the atrocities that we have endured. They endure too. It's just a different day and age. But they hurt. They're broken too. They are born broken. So, um, in talking to some of my friends, my age, the adults. Man, forget them little disrespectful ass youngins. Forget them. Uh, shit, they don't want to get on board and nation build. Man, they ain't got time. Did I? <laughs> Let me. When I say I'm for everybody, I mean I'm for everybody. How dare we say leave them behind? How dare we say that? Because we wouldn't have wanted our ancestors to say, fuck them. Like, yo, we are free now. And fuck the rest of them that's coming behind or whatever the case is. How dare we continue to move forward and leave them behind? They're the new generation. They're the ones that's coming behind us. So if we're out here building legacies, then who the fuck are we building legacies for? We're not going to be here. It's for them so everything I do today the seeds that I plant today even though I never I may never enjoy the shade from the trees from those seeds I plant today I plant them for them so we have to sometimes come down off of our high horses and understand that our children our children, not just your children, ours, they're broken, they're hurting, and either you learn how to communicate, meet them where they are, understand what they are going through, and not just look at them as they are um, an embarrassment to us. Now, I understand what the gentleman was saying to them. I understand. It's his frustration 
But believe me when I tell you, those are my babies. When I look at these young adults, I don't care if they got a gun on them, on standing on a corner, strung out on Y2K. I don't care. I talk to them because they're our babies. And it was us coming up in the crack era that damaged them. It was us. So we have to take accountability for our own actions. And we have to see the result of our actions in this in the youth today. That's a result from us making bad decisions. So no, we cannot leave them behind. And my apologies if I'm extremely passionate about it, but I am. I, I truly am. Because when I see them, I hurt. When I realize that they're gunning each other down, I know that they know no better. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. They are a result of their environment. And we got, we have to do better. It took us until we was in our late 30s, 40s to get to a place that we understood the shit that we did when we was in our 20s affected them. We are just now learning it. So what the fuck are they supposed to learn? And what the what what are they supposed to know and in, in their teens and early 20s? They don't know the same shit we didn't know. They're going to have to learn as well. But we have to learn how to reach back. We got to reach back and teach them and pull them along with us. We don't leave them behind. We don't leave them to kill each other. That's our responsibility as the adults. I digress. You gonna say something? Okay. Um, well, I was gonna say, cause I'm out here in New York and when I look at the community that's out here with me, I guess, because like what you're saying, like, you know, I've seen everything that has happened, you know, things whether on the news, things in the neighborhood. And even before my daughter even entered into high school, I was already having talks with her and just letting her know. I was like, you don't have to be like everybody else that lives here in this neighborhood. Just because people act a certain way in the neighborhood doesn't mean that we have to be the same way. And that whole thing that I feel like there are people out there giving out the wrong information when they're talking to, um, to the young black men and women where it's always like that ignorant or negative thing. And I'm just like, why would you tell them that? Like, that's not the way to survive by saying things that it's just kind of like, um, like maybe like I'm trying, I guess I'm trying to say like, oh yeah, like start maybe, you know, selling some weed so you can get some money or maybe do a little hustle on this. And in my mind, it's like, why would you tell a kid that should go and finish school and tell them that this is where he or she needs to be? Like, why? And it bothers me. Because even for my own daughter, I try to explain to her about things that were happening. And was like, you're smart. I was like, don't don't let these things because, you know, you don't want to show people you're smart and try to move ahead in life because you want to stay stuck in this place just because you don't want to show anybody. You know what I mean? And it just bothers because I feel like when it comes to us and I see the things like the Olympics and everything, you don't understand that when I see things on social media, I find it to be so beautiful when I see black people doing other things that I probably never seen before. I probably seen for the first time that to me, I find that to be beautiful because I feel like, okay, like that's just me, my opinion or whatever I'm saying right now, because I find, I feel that it's just this thing about like, it doesn't only need to be about basketball. And I, I don't know what other sports that it's so when it comes to like the black community, but I feel like there's just so much more out there than just that. I've seen ballerinas, I've seen musicians. I, and I think to me that is so beautiful. And it's just, it just bothers because it's like, it sucks that when they're in school and again, when they have people who are in their ear, like why are you trying to destroy them and not give them the opportunity of to be the best that they can be? Because again, I see it and I think it's beautiful. Why do we have to have people stuck in the same place just because they're stuck? And I hate that. And that's how I try to talk to my daughter to make her understand again, just because you live in the neighborhood doesn't mean you have to be like the people that are here. Why? Why? I agree. I agree, sis. 100%. It should bother you when you hear another adult telling a young 
person to sell weed or sell drugs to survive when everything on this planet Earth that we do derived from us anyway. <laughs> anyway, it started with us. So, yes, it's a beautiful thing to see us in our element. And our element isn't just sports or rapping. We are an elite race of people. We just don't know it. We don't know it because we've been stripped of the knowledge, brainwashed, buck broken. We don't know our own selves. We don't even know who the fuck we are as a race of people. We don't know we are royal. We were first. We were chosen first. We don't have hate in our hearts. We don't have hate in our hearts because we can't even hate the people who hate us. And the reason why we kill each other is because we've been put in cages, not just in prison, cages in our communities. Bled. So when I say it's a matter of teaching our youth who they are first and foremost, that's where we start. You have to stop them and say, hey, do you know who you are? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, shit. I'm African-American. American is a colony. It's not a race. It's a fucking colony. Stop saying that shit. Who are you? We have to teach them who they are. So when they walk the streets from now on, they know that their ancestors built those fucking streets. And there's nothing in the world that anyone can say to you and tell you about yourself that you should be walking around here believing and feeling bad about yourself and who you are. We have to unlearn everything we've been taught so we know who the fuck we really are. We are power. We are ancient and we were chosen to lead with the same compassion, same empathy that we have for these white supremacists who gun us down, who robbed us, who took us from our land, brought us here, raped us, lynched us, enslaved us, oppressed us, and we're still slaves to this day. We're not freedmen, but we don't know who we are. All we know is what they've taught us. So it's a matter of us who know better, reaching back and teaching our youth about our history. It starts there. Because if you know that you're royalty, you will walk accordingly. You will hold your head high accordingly. And instead of pointing your guns towards your brethren, you'll be pointing them towards your fucking enemies. That's all I have to say. Well said, Jackie. Thank you. Jackie done dropped the motherfucking mic, busted up the speakers and shit. Can't nobody come behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm big mad. But it's the truth. We we just have to learn who we are. But think about how many of those children never really had a man yell at them like that at that school. And you could see it. Like, right? You know what happens when daddy or your grandfather, your uncle say some shit. You'd be like, oh shit, straighten up time. But if you've never heard that in a household... He, you know, and those kids was clowning him. And I bet you those say, the same kids that probably just ignore their mama. She don't know what she's talking about. She don't know what she's talking about. I'm not going to lie to you, though. When you were saying that people tell children, I'm not sure, the young, they could sell drugs and stuff. Honestly, I didn't even think that was something that a family member or a friend would say to them. But what do I, I I'm from Brooklyn, but I, I, I guess I don't, whatever. Um, Honestly, like you said, we made the elevator, y'all. Next time your fat ass is long-winded, know that somebody that was melanated made the elevator. You know what else? We made the roller coaster. 
Next time you go to a motherfucking amusement park and the kid want to get there, that was us. We made potato chips. God damn it. We act the fool because we also made the keg. The keg beer. We made, oh my God. We what made about the, the GPS keg? system? The GPS system? Let's not forget the motor and the refrigerator. Yes. Please, freezer. That was yeah, also yeah. made by Mr. Clark. I knew him personally. He made the motor in our refrigerator freezers. Don't forget. You see that, that the Henry traffic Ford? light. The traffic light. You see Henry Ford's mm -hmm. car? Well, it was the it was a set of brothers that created the cartridge. But you know what happens here in America when people steal your patent and shit and take for themselves. And they were left to fix buses. Well, not only that, sis, we built this nation. Exactly. And not only did we build this nation, we built their dynasties. And we are left to beg for crumbs. So I tell my people and anybody that's listening and tuning in, when you walk down the sidewalk and one of them cross the street and clutch their bags or clutch their pearls, don't feel bad. It's your motherfucking block anyway. Period. Well, ain't nobody out here right now. <laughs> Listen, ain't nobody out here right now, though. <laughs> it's your block. And I want everybody to know that. It's your block. Built off of your ancestors' backs. Blood, sweat, and tears. When you step up in that White House or step on the steps, your ancestors built that. So know that we built this entire nation. We, they wouldn't have eaten. They wouldn't have had anything to eat if it was, wasn't for us cultivating their crops, growing their food for them, raising their kids, breastfeeding their babies for them. We built this nation. There is nothing anyone should be able to say to a black person living here in this United States of America to make us feel bad about ourselves. We are not the thugs. We saw the thugs on January 6th. We've been seeing thugs and our ancestors saw the thugs since they brought us over here on those ships. And don't let them tell you that anybody came by force. We were tricked. And the reason why we were tricked, if you go back and you look in the history, we came on board ships with personal belongings, with little bags, little books. Now, if we were taken, why would we have books and personal effects? We were tricked. And as soon as we got on board the ships, they took all our shit from us and threw it overboard. So no, pay just... Pay attention, close attention to the spin. You have to know who you are, not what they tell you you are. We're not thoughts, tricks, hoes, when black women are aggressive. No, we're not aggressive. We're power. There's a difference. There's power when we speak. There's power in our hips when we walk. There's power in the rhythm when we dance. There's power in our passion for things. We are power. And they fear it. Don't ever, ever, ever be afraid to accept who you are. Embrace it. Love it. Be proud of who you are. And know that you own this fucking country. But wait, doesn't that mean that instead of expecting someone to give you something, you have to go out and get the shit yourself? Yes, ma'am. Right? And so... That's exactly what it means. What has happened in the whole process of indoctrination of you have to wait till someone calls on you? The syndrome of, well, you, you you don't want your own business. You want to be a worker. Oh, you, you no, you don't want to own a home. You could just keep living in the in the, in, in you know, in poverty. Oh, don't worry about it. Um, 
why why would you want to shop and get bulk food when you could just go to the neighborhood corner store and get charged 10 times the fucking amount and then when you can't even afford to keep your head above fucking water do you get what i'm saying like the the makeup is so fucked up but there are people there have been so many people who have said enough is enough one two three generations okay we're gonna get it we're gonna get it it's not it's not impossible the dream is not impossible the nightmare is definitely real but the dream is not impossible so for me a lot of times i feel like if we paid it forward for someone else not just our children because you know even when our well, I, I could only speak for my. Even when my children were acting up, I would say, all right, everybody get in the car. You know, you get that report card and you're looking. It's not horrible, but you're like, bruh, don't bring this shit back to me no more. This looks crazy. This looks like, this looks like, you know, we live under the fucking bridge like trolls. Like, <laughs> you ain't got pencils, papers, nothing. I said, get in the car. Where are we going? Don't worry about it. You mad at my report? No, 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 don't worry. Let's go. And I would say, okay, we're here. Why are we at the train station? Because your mother loves you. And I am not one of these parents out here that's going to try to even play with you. So now, if your grades are going to decline, let me show you how to be the best motherfucking bum you can be. Huh? No, no, no. Let's make a sign. Let's make a sign. What what should it be? A dollar? Two dollars and fifty cents? Man, them fucking kids was like, grades were excellent the next semester. They was like, yeah, we're not doing that. This is embarrassing. We don't want to stand here and beg. Well, it is what it is. And I'm going to be that mother. I'm going to keep it real with you. This is what the other side has to offer. I love you enough to tell you, you gotta, you're going to have to do what the fuck you have to do. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that shit isn't going downhill. Now, most people that work, right, We not all of us had amazing grades and shit like that. But you should expect the absolute, they need to do better than we did. Your children should not do worse than you're doing. You're, you've gone through your own personal hell. So now the goal is to now make your children feel that they are valuable because you're they come from you you're valuable and i think that's the problem we've been told we're ugly and we're we're lazy and we're poor and we're ugh. and then we don't even like ourselves so now how are we gonna like our own children i hate that people could turn their back and i understand some children are just rotten but well, technically we spoil them so now we have to find ways around it. We have to, as a mother, and then it takes a village. Do you know what I'm saying? It takes a village. I have no problem uh, in saying, because I've had friends where, you know, their kids are acting up and saying, okay, maybe they kind of need a little break from you and kind of showing them stuff. Hey, you think you can do that? Da, 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 da. And then seeing your child is bright. Your child can have a bright future. You just have to be patient with the child. <laughs> and if nobody ever wanted you, if your your father, your father didn't show up and now your mother don't want to deal with you, how are you supposed to grow up and feel like a whole individual when nobody, not even your blood fucking wanted you? There is like a trauma behind this. And I think a lot of times people, oh, well, you know, black people, listen, da, da, da. I get it. But. Why would you destroy someone that looks like you? You're fucking hurting. You don't even like yourself. Because on, honest to God, if you really felt like angry as you really felt and you knew the history behind this all, you wouldn't be killing your own. You really wouldn't. It would be so much more Nat Turners out here. Reparations would already happen. I'm going to keep it a buck. True that. I'm going to say I'm, I've witnessed Mothers, um, I've been, I've had to go back and apologize to my daughter, my oldest daughter, because I am hard. I was, I was raised like that in the South. You know, you do as I say and not as I do. 
or or you get ready to get this belt across your ass in public or this backhand that you don't even know is coming. It just catches you out of nowhere. And you straighten your ass up real quick. So corporal punishment is common in the black family. However, I've had to apologize to my oldest that came to me and she said, mom, you know, when you punished me, it broke me. And I had to listen to her. I had to hear her. I couldn't just say, oh, well, too bad. That's how I was raised. So I'm a teacher. I did. and But I did. I did how I was. I did exactly how I was raised to do. You know, you do as I say and not as I do. And, but I had to hear it and apologize. I had to apologize and tell her I'm sorry because I love you and I never want to hurt you, ever. I don't ever want to, I, I can't sleep knowing that you feel that way. So however, whatever I need to do to make it right, if by me saying I'm sorry or showing you my love, I'll never do that to you again. And I've kept my word. So, but I stood by and watched others close to me talk down to their kids like they were nothing. Motherfucker, if you don't get the fuck out of here before I do that. What? You talking to your son that way? You talking to your king? You're breaking them. You are breaking him. Just recently, I had to have this conversation with someone. Stop breaking that boy. He is experiencing enough when he leaves outside your door every day. And go outside and you got peer pressure and you got dudes rolling up on him. And you got this one and you got that. You, He's already experiencing enough out here. You got the cops rolling up on him, questioning him, patting him down. Got him sitting on the curb or either lay down on the curb. Why must he come home and be called all kinds of motherfuckers and this, that, and the third. Or either busting him in his back with your fist. And We are damaged people. But the one thing that we have got to do is stop breaking our kids. We got, we have got to encourage them and lift them. Put lift them on high. Tell them who they are. We even need to know who we are. Because if we knew that we were royalty and we were a special breed of people, we wouldn't teach ourselves, we wouldn't treat ourselves like we do, and we damn sure wouldn't treat our children that way. We just have to unlearn everything we've been taught about ourselves. And then when we see it, if you have a girlfriend or even a male friend, and you hear them talking to their children like that, it is your responsibility. Or you're not a friend to them. You cannot say you're a friend if you stand by and you hear it, you watch it, you let it go down. I don't give a fuck whether you're in their house or you're outside in front of their house. Say something to them. Stand up for those kids that are afraid to say it themselves. You should say it as an adult. But don't just stand by and not say a word. Wait now, Jackie. Wait now, Jackie. I've done that. We're not friends no more. It's okay. You did right. Because though. They was like, you don't tell me what to do with my motherfucking kid. That, that's, that, right. That's, that's right. Damn. Yeah. That's the, re that's the reaction I got to. But I did what was right nonetheless. Rather than do anything at nothing at all, I did what I knew was right. Okay, bitch, you don't want to be friends with me no more than fuck you. Let me see a mark on them, though. Let me see a mark on them. And then I'm going to gather a few more people in the neighborhood to come in back and knock on your door again. Or I'm going to find a male 
to mentor him. So as soon as he st- as he steps outside your door, that brother's going to snatch him up. Come here, young man. Come here, young man. Let me talk to you for a minute. But we have to do something instead of doing nothing at all. Then we're just as guilty. Jackie, but it's a cycle, right? So like, if you're, and I, I'm going to keep it real. If your parents yelled at you like this, if, if your mother... Or your who your grandmother yelled at you think it's normal. You're gonna think this is normal. Fuck. I mean, you're gonna think it's normal to snap on your kids because it's like indoctrination. You just feel like okay. I remember when, like you said, you could just be looking at grown folks talking, and now you're getting an ass whooping. You could just be walking by and hear something. You say, "Huh?" And they be like, "Was I talking to you?" Go pow pow. You know, just. Anything you could be getting your hair comb, they pull it too hard, and you'll get a beating. Like everything was a beating at at one point when you're young. Because I, when I was a little girl, I was like, these people don't like me. <laughs> they hate me. They trying to kill me. Because I felt like I was getting beatings all the time, and I was the kind of child that sat down and was quiet. Matter of fact, I was too busy talking to spirits, and still was getting my ass whooped. You get what I'm saying? And so imagine now not having that outlet. Of course, you're going to grow up and wild out. Of course, you're going to grow up and meet a couple of bad seeds. And um, that was weird. I seen a flashing light, but it's dark over there. Nonetheless. Okay. All right. Sorry. So I saw it. Did you? And there's no yes. window. There's no window or anything. There goes the thunder. The window's here. The thing is. All right. Sorry. So <laughs> shit like that. That's my life. And so, yeah, the, the answer is the universe. No, I ain't lying. And so at the end of the day, for me, if we could just fix where things went wrong within ourselves. And the only way to do that is when you get a hold of other children, even yours, and just remind them you love them. Can it repair all the yelling and shit you do? No, but it's a fucking start. You know, how many of us weren't hugged, weren't kissed, wasn't told you did good? Only when you did bad, they told you. How many of us was, right, I see you, Yoshi. <laughs> how many of us were just put down, put down, put down? And then when you did excellent, it was like fucking crickets. And so it was like, well, I could get on a straight and narrow path, but I get more attention when I'm losing my fucking mind. And sometimes that's what it is. It's like, I know this is going to sound fucked up. But it's like having a pet and conditioning the pet not to fucking piss on the fucking floor when you're not home. You have to tell your child, I love you. I care about because you want to hear, too. If you was with a man and he didn't say he loved you, he he didn't say nothing nice. You got dressed nice and he just looked at you and went, "Mm." you're like, I can't stay with this motherfucker. This nigga taking my self-esteem with him. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like we, we have to change the way we do things. And I know, well, what is it? Massa and the, the whole slave shit. And so my grandmother used to say, she didn't believe in beating her children because that's some shit that the slave masters taught us. She said, children are people. But here's the thing, they're individuals. And every child is different. Some you could talk to. Some got a hard head. Some got a soft behind. Some you got to prove a point. You got to take something away. Because you could have three, four children. I promise on God, all of them, it's something in particular that'll make them straighten up. But as the parent, you got to figure it out. And then you can figure it out with other people's kids too. You get what I'm saying? We just have to do better because we want it better for ourselves that we have to. I'm not perfect, but let me tell you something. When I talk to my children and maybe that's the Brooklyn and shit, I be like, listen. This is what happened when so-and-so did so-and-so. You could do time in jail. You could get this. This is what this is. This is STD. This is what, uh, you know, early pregnancy looks like. This is what, uh, this is what doing drugs look like. You pick your poison because I ain't going to be here forever. What do you want to do? I want to make money. Oh, okay. You want me to show you how to do an EIN? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just some simple ass just give it to them raw. Tell them what it is. Or guess what? Somebody outside going to teach it them, to them. Do you, and, and we know that as women, right? Because y'all know. Y'all know how it goes. 
And you know, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to learn about my kids. And you would think they're all older. I'm getting older and I feel like I'm still learning. And then another thing, what's, what was being talked about is like things of the trauma and, the, and how the cycle continues. I'm, I'm one of them. I've been told to, um, to get therapy and I'm like, and it's crazy because I still haven't gotten therapy yet. I'm worried about everybody else but myself Still haven't gotten therapy because I have a lot on my chest. And I noticed that that also, another thing that sometimes I think about, I wonder if that's another reason why people have so much anger in them too, because I've noticed how I was. So imagine, you know what I mean? Imagine other people who feel angry as well because of everything that they've been through and so much. And it, and, and it makes you think, and it kind of makes sense when you really think about it. Cause I'm thinking to myself, if I'm angry, I'm angry about how I was raised and how and the, like what you were saying, like the things were said by my mom. It's just like I was holding on to all of that. And it makes a lot of sense about who knows why people probably are like that, like that, too. And there was never no talk back then about getting therapy and, you know, this is what's needed. Like what Cindy said, it was considered normal. She thought whatever she was doing or saying was normal. She never, never thought about it twice. Like, you know, I shouldn't say that. Or I shouldn't pick, because I have a brother, I have a younger brother, I shouldn't play favorites and, and, and say all these great things about, you know, my son and, and then my daughter, all of a sudden, I, I'm, I'm basically like a nobody. That kind of hurts, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it stays with you and it's kinda, it kind of sucks, you know? And then everybody's like, oh, you need therapy. And I'm like, look. And then in my mind, I'm, I, at one point, I was kind of fighting it because I was like, I don't really need therapy. I mean, like, I know what's wrong. <laughs> I was like, I know what's the problem. And I was like, I need to unlearn, to learn how to unlearn things. But I was just like more in denial. I was like, I don't need therapy. I was like, I know what the problem is. How to fix it, that, that was the only issue right there. But yeah, I totally get it. No, I was going to say, you know, you learn. Everything is a learning process. Life is, you know, Um and just like how we learn things from our childhood, we do put that onto our children. Does it make you a bad person? Yeah, in the in a sense. But you know, as your kids is older and every I know mine is older, so you know, I was able to apologize for a lot of the wrong that I did with like the beatings. Because I used to be beat a lot, um, when I was little. However, um, you know, um, with the other children, I mean, I did that with my first child. I beat him a lot. But with the other three kids that I have, you know, I try to, well, I have learned along the way to change some of my parenting behaviors. And, um, you know, have, have the father in the household and to do things the right way, to get married. and But I think also, you know, with us um, feeling one way with us growing up, feeling like you're incomplete, I think that has a lot to do with it, you know, your, ch your childhood trauma. Um, you feel in one way and then you meet somebody and for me, I met someone that was abusive. And then, you know, going through life, learning and still growing and trying to figure out myself and still got mouths to feed. And then I ended up getting married and, you know, still 